do we take the risk here? It just says Unbreaking 3, which is what we want, but there's a lot of other wild random things we might get with that. We're probably gonna, gonna get disappointed here. Bane of Arthropods. <laughs> oh. Alright, let's, let's just do a little undo on that one. Uh-huh, yeah, so up until this point in the series, we have just been putting level 1 enchantments on our gear, and I thought it would be a good goal to get us started today to get the bookshelves around our enchanting table so we can finally do level 30 enchantments, and also we had to go into the spider spawner. It, it got destroyed by Enderman picking up blocks and dropping them off, so we had to venture into there and and try to clear it out. There we go. We got him out. Nice. It took a little bit of persistence, but eventually we got it cleaned out here, and we got some lamps installed inside now. Four lamps in the corners, so that when we turn them on, spiders stop spawning inside here. We got it all encased in cobblestone now instead of dirt. Put some spikes in the corners as well, so if uh, the spiders climb up, they'll die. And last little thing I forgot to do here is uh, we're going to put string all along the bottom. So that if an enderman does get in here, he won't be able to drop off his blocks anymore and, and block uh, the spider from going into the killing chamber. Okay, so this is our on-off switch for the spawner. We flip it down, spikes come out, lights go off, and spiders spawn. And then their XP orbs get gathered together in the corner. We can pick it up through the glass. Oh, efficiency four on the pick, though. Yeah, we got to go for that. Bane of Arthropods four! <laughs> I just can't get away from it. All right, very good. So we just spent a bit of time getting enchanted up and we're somewhat geared up now. We kind of ran out of lapis, so we weren't able to do our lower half here. <laughs> but we got fire protection, unbreaking three. And what I've found is it's actually very difficult to get anything good on our stuff because there's so much random enchantments like anima conduit three. What is that? I have, I have no idea, but there's lots of stuff like that. And the pool of enchantments is huge. So... A lot of times you get like a bunch of random stuff and maybe one good thing. So we got power four on the bow, so that's awesome. Looting three on the sword, I could not roll over that. Like I did a bunch of rerolls on stuff here as well. And when I hit that, it's like, nope, got to keep that. Uh, efficiency four on our axe. Good shovel here on breaking three efficiency four. And then sharpness three and fortune two on the pickaxe. And I could not roll over that because we're desperate for redstone, diamonds, you know. Well, we need lapis. We need a bunch of goodies. So that's the plan now. Uh, we're going to head out and do some mining. Also, I fed the rest of my gold to our horse <laughs> with the redstone carrots. So we got a super speed horse again, but we're broke. Um, so we're going to... Oh, bear. We're going to head out to the desert, I think is around here. Uh, let's see. Follow. I hear the bear coming. These bears... So there's two types of bears. These are the friendly bears, I think. But the black bears will actually like hunt you down. Yeah, these guys are pretty tame. Okay. Which is uh, kind of the reverse. It's the grizzly bears you want to avoid in real life. <laughs> Not the black bears. Well, actually, you want to avoid the black bears too, but they're a little bit uh, less scary. But still scary. Okay. Let's uh, try find that spot we, we mined in one spot but here before. Uh-oh. Any of you know how to get rid of these pink fires? You see this guy? He's got the fire enchantment, fire trail enchantment, and it drives me nuts. I've looked through the config file so many times to figure out how to shut that off, and I can't. Because what happens is I got fire spread off in the world, but that means uh, when these guys spread their pink fire, it never disappears. I have to put it out manually, which <laughs> is so annoying. Oh yeah, I think it was over there. So we dug for some of the sandstone stuff, uh, I think in the previous episode. And this is our tunnel there. And while I was digging around here, I found a cave. So that's where we're going to do our mining, hopefully. Go explore that. Uh, let's see, I think it was around here. Yeah, it goes down here. Okay, so this is what we're going to go check out. Do I have a uh, cobble? Yep. Cool, we'll build a staircase down. Actually, let's go check this out. There's like some kind of structure here. There's like stone brick there. Might be like a mine shaft or something. Oh, these spiders are the worst. Okay, let's try out our new power four bow. One shot. <laughs> nice. How's it do on these guys? 
Not quite a one shot. Uh, this guy's pretty tanky, actually. Okay, there we go. Uh, what do we got over here? Oh my goodness, that's like a a dungeon door. What is this? This is not. I thought it was a mine shaft thing. Can we go in here? Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, I got nervous all of a sudden. <laughs> it's just like a real thing. Oh, wait, there's traps. Oh, I'm walking like crazy. What's going on? Okay. <laughs> I think that was uh, like a wobbly effect. A wobbly arrow. Very effective against the Netho. Because now I'm all discombobulated. Okay, let's break the uh, string here. I see a skeleton up ahead. A bunch of skeletons up ahead. Let's try out our bow. This bow is kind of interesting. I think when we shoot the guys, it attacks another mob nearby. And it counts as the skeleton hitting the other skeletons, so they start fighting each other. Which is pretty cool. Oh. Yep. Try out our new machete. Seems pretty good. So this has a, a cool ability as well, Sturdy Guard. You see that? We can... Uh, we can right click and then it guards us for a little bit. I don't know if it's like a shield or if it's like the old Minecraft sword where it like cuts damage in half. We'll have to experiment with that. Whoa! <laughs> Surprise! Oh, it doesn't work on arrows though, I don't think. Let's try. Yeah, it doesn't work on arrows. Do these drop anything? No, they don't. They're just decoration. Oh, now I take it back. Okay, they actually drop stuff. Efficiency 5? <laughs> I'm taking that home with me. Oh, that's perfect. Oh boy. This might get, this might get a little dangerous. Get some torches down. Good thing they're just regular zombies. If they had any kind of armor, I would not be able to do this. Did the... Was that a one-time use spawner? It's gone now, right? Okay. This is kind of like a dead end, I think. This is oil, I'm pretty sure. Oh, there's a chest here. Cool. Frenzied 2. We got a bunch of golden apples. We got a skull charge banner. Check this out. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got more here. Oh, boy. Okay. Those are not what you want to see. I'm a little nervous about them having swords. We got the sword guy out. Break the spawner. Nice, nice. What do we got here? Name tag, a record, gunpowder. Uh, bust up the jars here. Oh, another chest here too. Uh, but, but, where'd that go? Efficiency five, yeah. So I actually had an anvil with me, so I may as well put that on. Oh no. No. <laughs> Doesn't let you. Redstone turtle. You, if you're friendly, are my new best friend. Are you friendly? I think he's friendly. Okay, we gotta clear the area, then we can check him out. Uh, gotta get rid of the spawner here. Ooh. Zombies. Oh, and a witch. Back up, back up. Oh, the spider got me trapped. Oh boy. And it goes downhill quick in this game, I tell ya. <laughs> oh no! No! Yeah, I didn't set my spawn either, so we gotta do the walk of shame here. Yeah, the bad news is we didn't get very far there, but also the good news is we didn't get very far, so our stuff is nice and close. Okay, there's the structure, the dungeon, and our stuff. Excellent. The redstone turtle's gone. <laughs> Aww. Are we doing 14 arrows left? <laughs> oh boy. Will we do this? Oh yeah, we back away. We back away from that one. Oh boy. Oh, here we go again. As long as they don't poison me, I'll be fine. Case fighter's gone. They're fighting each other, which is good news. Oh, I did block it with the with the right click. Okay, wait a second. Maybe it does work on arrows. This thing is just so cool. Boink. 
I just wish... I wonder if you can enchant it to make it a little faster. That's the only thing I wish about it. Surely that can't go wrong. <laughs> I think I got the witch. That was actually pretty good. Oh, but the spider trapped me again. The spiders are the worst. Oh, I'm trapped again. Okay. Okay, that was a close one. And these guys were just watching the whole time. <laughs> I saw them. It's like, are they going to get me? Uh, I don't know. Hello. <laughs> I really wish you would leave me alone. Okay. Go in. Got to light one more time here. Four chests in the skelly spawner, too. What is the deal with this? Not that I'm complaining. Um, this we will want to take back home with us if we can. I think we figured out how to do it, right? Was it with these? No, can't can't grab it with that. Uh, we need something else. Okay, what do we got for goodies? Diamond horse armor. Very nice. Growing three. We got a satchel of snacks. <laughs> that's my new favorite item. We got... Ooh, that's a fancy looking thing. Bubble burster. Bubble damage. Full metal chest plate. Eight protection. That's really good. Most of the ones I find are only like five or six. Oh, and a free backpack. That's cool. All right. Very good. So I spent some time mining up the ores we found and explored a little bit more there. And then our inventory kind of got filled up. So I decided to head back to our starting area here and just set up a little base camp. So I'm dropping off our stuff and ores. We got about six stacks of iron so far, three stacks of copper. Let's try out this satchel of snacks here. So it, it seems to make a random food item every time you use it. So what do we get here? Got a notch apple? <laughs> Holy smokes. Okay, I, I'm either really lucky or this thing is insane. Did we just pull a notch apple? Really? Let's try it one more time. That, that had to have been luck, right? Not full of 64 notch apples, I'm sure. Oh yeah, we just got raw beef that time. But yeah, we're not quite done with the caving just yet because we found this mine shaft and we're gonna go explore this together. Now this is a key structure in this series. Uh, if we ever wanna get to the end, which we do, <laughs> we can't just do the normal route of, uh, oh, getting a bunch of ender eyes and finding a stronghold. It's not that simple because we have the end remastered mod in this pack. And what that does is it disables the stronghold, and instead you have to find these 12 special keys hidden around the world. One of them is found in the mine shafts, like this. Um, the special ender eyes, and when you combine them all together, you can finally get to the end. So one of them's in the mine shafts, one's in the desert temple, one's in the nether fortresses, jungle temples. They're kind of just scattered throughout the structures. I think you might have to fight a raid to get one of them. I can't quite remember all of them. But if we're lucky, we will get, in this chest, one of our keys. It's not in there. Okay, let's try again. <laughs> we'll, we'll just kind of blitz through this real quick and hopefully find it. Uh, okay. A zombie. And a creeper. This is a big mine shaft. We found one of these before, but it was just kind of like a tiny one. And it did not have the key in. Nope, not in there. Oh, dead end. Wait, what level are we at here? We're at 39 and there's redstone? That's kind of weird. I wonder if this is like a bonus. Yeah, this definitely seems like an odd generation for redstone, right? Mixed, mixed in with the cobble and it's a huge vein. So it's like a little bonus thing, I think. That's perfect. We needed that. <laughs> yeah, let's go down here. Equip the mushroom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Oh yeah, this is this is getting scattered now. Okay, that's good. Means we got plenty of places le left to explore. Another dead end. This one looks like an iron vein. So it must pick a random ore and then it just puts that at all the dead ends so that you don't feel like, oh, what a waste of time. <laughs> There's nothing here. You know, There's, you actually get something, which is kind of nice.
Well, I'm pretty sure we checked the whole mine shaft there, but unfortunately there was no special ender eye that we were looking for. So unlucky this time, maybe next time. We're going to head back now, I think. But before we do, I did find this giant andesite uh, vein. So we're going to mine that up because we need that uh, andesite for create mod stuff. We'll just grab a bunch of this stuff. All right, very good. We made it back home here and we're going to get to processing the ores we got. So all we got to do is throw them into our crushing machine grind mill over here. So we throw them into the chest. And then they should automatically get ejected here and crushed. And then we can uh, somewhat duplicate the, the iron and stuff that way. Uh-huh. Very good. Uh, we also got a couple other things to check out. So I did find, <laughs> not a redstone turtle, we found a lapis turtle when I was exploring. So I kind of want to check this out. I think it was either with shears. Not with shears. There is a way to shave them. You can try pick them, but that's probably a bad idea. Oh, okay, never mind. It worked. We will name him Lappy. Oh, you can feed them cactus. Interesting. I think Lappy might have some kind of cool down because I fed him 20 cactus after that and he didn't regrow it again. So I, I think he might have to wait five minutes or something. Not entirely sure how that works. Uh, we did get a bunch of geodes. So we're going to open these up. Pan redstone. Very nice. And emeralds. Iron... Flint, more redstone, a diamond. Oh my goodness. Okay, we got some goodies. Very nice. Uh, we also want to try to figure out how to get this efficiency book on our Tetra pick. So I was looking into it, and I'm not quite sure. <laughs> so it's got Fortune 2, a Sharpness 3 on, and there's an option here. It, it's weird because they also have honing. So right now, one side of the pick has efficiency 4 on, and the other side has efficiency 2, because I've been adding those every time I hone them. But I'm wondering, if we go to enchant here, does that replace the current level, or does it add it on top of it? I don't know. So it's going to cost us 5 experience levels to do this, and it seems to take up another bar on the pick here. Okay, now did that replace? Oh no, it added. Okay, we got efficiency 5, fortune 2. And if we go to the honing, what's it say? So it still says efficiency 2 here and efficiency 4 there. Okay, good. So we'll add that on top of it. So oh, this went down. I might have made a mistake just there. <laughs> uh oh. Destabilized efficiency 3. That's probably not good. Oh, I should have uh, been a little more careful. Cleanse? Cleanse negative effects caused by magic instability. Oh, okay, so that's what happened. So if we add Lapis, that removes it. And we're back up to 33 here. Okay, good. Good, good. So this is probably like a crazy fast pick now. Oh, no. I thought we would instant mine stone, but I guess not yet. All right, very good. So we uh, took our processed ores and we crafted them into some uh, create components here. Kind of refilled our storage. Um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about some bigger plans with this series. We've kind of just been building around our spawn area there, but there's actually, like eventually I would like to build something big in each of the biomes would be cool. And then we'd have a reason to go between them and set up paths between them and, and that kind of thing. Um, in the desert here, the plan is to build some sort of create factory. Like back when I put this mod pack together, I had the option of adding applied energistics to the mod pack. And don't get me wrong, applied energistics is an amazing mod. It uh, kind of just handles all your storage and auto crafting needs into just a couple blocks and uh, it's very convenient. <laughs> but I got thinking about it and ultimately I decided not to include it in the mod pack because I felt like it was too easy. It felt like Especially in this mod pack, we had to work for our um, amazing machines, right? Especially with the crate mod. Like, it is possible to auto-craft things. It's just not quite as convenient as applied energistics. So, one of our goals here is to build, like, a giant factory for producing all the different crate components. We just feed it raw resources like copper and netherrack, and it'll spit these out as we need them. And uh, it's going to be a lot of planning and organizing and 
and setting up and stuff, which will will be cool. <laughs> uh, but I also want to take it a little bit further. You might remember in season one of the mod pack, we did the Coke factory where we tried to create like a realistic uh, cold Coke system. We had the cold Coke placed in the world and there were ovens and gases escaped from the ovens when you open them up and they caught on fire and, and did stuff like that. We want to kind of bring that over here as well because I've always been intrigued by the idea. What if in Minecraft you couldn't just store stuff in like a single block, like a chest or whatever. Like you couldn't put hundreds of hundreds of blocks into a single block. What if you actually had to move them around in the world? Like if you wanted to store eight gravel blocks, you actually need to place them in the world like that, right? <laughs> so that's kind of what we're planning for this factory is uh, we're going to need big warehouses to store our raw resources and uh, to move them around and stuff is what I would like to try achieve. So lots of big plans. We're going to keep it simple for today, though. I want to try and make a way of washing gravel. Yeah, so this is our, our main thing we're trying to do here. Bulk washing, you put gravel in water and then have the fan blow air at it. And then you get flint and you get iron. And it's a way of creating iron out of out of gravel or cobblestone. Aha. But we're, we're trying to make it fun, right? <laughs> so what I want to do is build a giant silo that will store like thousands of gravel blocks in the real world. And then we're going to flip a switch and it's going to dump them out. So... Oh, how do, how do we get into this? I mostly just want to play around with ID a little bit today, see if we can get it figured out. So I think we want a mechanical bearing, because those can rotate. And then we'll connect it up to um, some blocks here. Let's just put these down. Ooh. This will be a good learning experience for me, too, just to get better with the create mod. I think I'm not supposed to hold shift when I place these. Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. Okay, we got a hand crank on this mechanical bearing just to try this out. So whenever we click this, it'll rotate. Okay. Now I want to see what it does when we put gravel on top of this. What happens to the gravel? Does it fall straight down or, or what? Oh yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Okay, cool. That's kind of what I wanted. There's another option for how to do this. And I want to experiment with that too. So if we get our wrench and look at this... We have a couple options here. Always place when stopped. Only place near initial angle or only place when anchor destroyed. Let's try this initial angle thing. So I think instead of like locking into 90 degree angles, it can kind of rotate a little more freely. Oh, maybe not. What is it doing here? <laughs> yeah, like it'll do, it'll stop at a 45. Okay, weird. Uh, let's, put, let's put them on here. Let's put a couple of more on top to see what they do as well. Okay. Uh-huh. So what I'm trying to do here is kind of make like a, a trap door that opens up and drops the gravel down. So I'm kind of imagining we will extend this and make it into like a 4x8 platform. Right? And then there'll be another one mirrored to the other side here. And the gravel will be on top of this, the giant silo that goes up into the sky, basically. And whenever we want to do a, an iron harvest, we will flip the door open. It'll drop it down into our washers uh, just by doing this, basically. Uh-huh. I think that kind of worked. <laughs> I'm a little worried on like how laggy it's going to be and that kind of stuff, but... Uh... Might be okay. Whoa, there we go. Now, unfortunately, in order to actually wash the gravel, we can't do it in block form like this. We actually have to turn the blocks into entities and put them in front of the fan and uh, put them in water. And then I think if we blow on that, it'll turn into flint and uh, iron, right? Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Turn it into flint. Okay. So we'll probably drop the gravel on there onto some waterlogged slabs and then the blocks will break into their entity form and then the fans will turn them all into iron and stuff. But what we got to figure out though is how do we stack the gravel onto or into our silo? Like we could lift it in with some kind of fancy lift system or we might play around with these weighted ejectors to do it. So these are kind of cool. I got to figure it out here. You got to sneak and right click to select the target location. And then you place it down, like normal, I think, like that. So now it's got its target.
picked out, and the farther away it is, the more power it takes to crank it up. Like, instead of just, like, one revolution here, it takes quite a few to get all the way down. And the way this will work is we will drop our gravel on that. And then it'll launch it, and we could launch it onto our silo, maybe, platform up there, and kind of stack them that way. Whoa, boy! Okay, check this out. I think this will work pretty good, actually, if we want to do it this way. Uh, we set our target to maybe around there, and then if we go a block or two above our target and back by one, we can create a block to align the gravel in midair, so that when it hits it, it goes perfectly straight up and down. And then when it lands, it doesn't actually break into an entity form. Because if it's not perfectly aligned in the block, it can break into an entity. And we don't want that. We want it stored as a block in our silo. Um, and then when this column fills up, it'll move on to the next one, and then the next one, and the next one. I think we can do like an 8x8 eight eight area in our silo just with 8 of these weighted ejectors. Oh, great satchel of snacks. What do you have for us today? Bread. <laughs> yeah, we'll take it. Uh, unfortunately, guys, we're, we're kind of out of time here already. Man, where does the time go? Uh, I think we'll have to wait for next episode to get more into that. So if you have ideas, let me know in the comments of how we should implement it, if you know a better way. Uh, I'm going to think on it as well. But we're going to get to the comment of the day, which says, Of your modded world, your Let's Play world, and Hermitcraft, which is your favorite one to play on, and why? Ooh, that's a tough one, right? So obviously we have three different series because I like each one for different reasons. Uh, modded Minecraft, it's all about uh, exploring endless possibilities, new features, exciting new stuff. Uh, Hermitcraft is all about the social game, you know, you got you can interact with other people and do things with them, play mini games with them. Can't really do that in single player, but single player, oh, it's got history. It's got hundreds of projects on the go that never got finished. <laughs> I log into my Let's Play world and I always have something to do. It, it's nice and cozy, you know, I, I really enjoy it for uh, the simplicity and like trying to make cool things when you have limited possibilities is uh, takes, takes quite a bit of creativity. So which is my favorite one? Well, it's almost like picking a favorite child. I can't do that, right? I love them all for their own special reasons. <laughs> Now, let's not be boring here. Let's pick one. I'm going to say the Let's Play world just because of the history. It is my cozy series. I find it's the easiest one to record for. You know, I can log into that world. I always have something to do. And you guys seem to be happy even when I do like random episodes where I'm just finishing up projects that never got done. Um, I don't have to have some kind of grand goal every episode I'm making. Um, while something like modded Minecraft is a lot more complicated, there's a lot of features to it, and you got to learn how all those features work. Like, if I want to Doug walking around the bar here, I need to do research how, how to make that happen. I had to make him a skin, for example, and do all this behind-the-scenes stuff. Plus, like, you know, I crashed five times making this episode, which is never fun. <laughs> you know, you got you got stuff like that to deal with. Oh, speaking of crashing, big lag spike. Um... Hermitcraft, same same thing. You know, it's not quite as simple of a series as my Let's Play because you got the social aspect of it. You you want to do stuff with other people, and other people have schedules that you gotta plan to work around and figure out what you're doing with people. It, it's not as easy as recording on your own. Thank you for the question. Thank you for watching today, guys. Uh, if you're wondering where the episodes have been, I took a little break, like ten days off, just to you know relax a little bit with 1.20 coming out. I figured this would be the best time to do it. Played some Stardew Valley. I haven't played that in years and had a ton of fun <laughs> checking out all the new stuff with that. Um, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks for watching. Until the next one, take care. Bye-bye.